Welcome into game number three. I see the scoreboard went AWOL. There we go. Well, welcome into game number three of CTL week number five between Galaxy and Team Kessel. Spawning in the bottom base in the purple color playing for Team Kessel. His team lost the last game. Can he give Team Kessel back the lead? It is Cam Panda. Cam Panda, the team captain for Team Kessel. It's worth noting. And spawning across from him in the... It's not 12 o'clock, it's like 11 o'clock base. In the pink, they're playing uh, for Galaxy and currently with the wrong race icon shown. I'll fix that in just a second. Can he give his team the first lead of the match? It is Raven Assassin. I My scoreboarding is off today. There we go. Everything fixed now. This is GSL Atlantic... Er, GSL Antigua Shipyard. This is really easy for me to say. GSL, Antigua Shipyard, forced cross positions, in case you're wondering. Uh, so these positions are the only ones that can spawn in. The only other difference between that and the ladder, blue bases right here, or blue, blue minerals right here, and the, of course, the neutral supply depot. So these are things that may affect the game as we go later on. Uh, this is one of the only maps in the pool I actually like for Terran. Just going to throw that out there. Um, Anyway, uh, really great to have a talkative chat tonight. It's uh, a lot of fun. Uh, just to give a little bit of background information for people who might not know. Um, again, my screen name is Maristomatic. I'm a senior biochemistry student at Colorado State University. Um, I see a lot of the guys talking about football. Our team's been three and nine the last three years. That's all three years that I've been here. But we beat CU my freshman year. Uh, and that's, I guess, all that really matters. Um, at least we've got the one win in three years to tie it up. Um, I know Sleepy Panda goes to UNC. Uh, that's just down the road, so I guess there's a little bit of a rivalry there. Um, at least we have volleyball and basketball, I guess. That's always a bonus. Um, I also... In addition to StarCraft, um, I also cast... I guess it's not really cast. I announce uh, our team's ACHA hockey game. And i have the link for you guys later on if you really care. Uh, but that's that's more of a personal thing. And you get to know some really cool stuff, like my actual name and how much of a nerd I am about hockey in addition to StarCraft. So anyway, kind of at least a little bit different than the standard TVP to start off with. Uh, we've seen Raven Assassin has stolen his opponent's uh, Vespian Geyser and stolen four of his Vespian Gas, and now is uh, furiously retreating. If you want to get rid of the maximum uh, amount of resources from your opponent's base, you steal the Gas Geyser, you take some out of that, you go directly to the mineral patch next to it, steal some of those minerals, and then go back to the Assimilator. Um, if you're really interested in how you drain resources with a probe, you can't do too much about it. Uh, the really interesting thing to note from Campana is he actually has a Gas Geyser. This isn't going to be a one max fast expand, uh, but instead something else entirely. And by something else entirely, I mean proxy to factory. I hope this is a build that I actually like to do, uh, which is proxy Hellions. Uh, it's something that I saw, I forget which pro player it was, but it was in the GSL. Um, it doesn't look like, okay, it actually is going to be proxy to Hellions. Beautiful. Uh, unless he's going to just double up Metavax early, but... It will be some proxied Hellions. This is actually a little bit of a problem. The Zealot and Stalker coming in. There's no units here at the front to defend. And this could do a lot of damage. This little poke. Very common poke that you see all the time. Again, there's only two Marines. He's actually focusing down the Supply Depot, which I don't like. And there, finally, the Stalker is starting to shoot at the Marines. Targeting down the Zealot quickly. And that's not what you want to do. Uh, if you get in this position, SCVs do need to start repairing the Supply Depot, but this is doing quite a bit of damage. Uh, that Stalker does need to get out of there. Uh, that's one Marine for free, basically. Um, he may have got an SCV as well. He also forced this Bunker, uh, which is Campanda, overreacting a little bit. The pressure's over at that point. There's nothing more he can do. But we see the proxy to Hellions are on, and this can really catch Protoss players off guard. Uh, is something that I really love about this strategy. And it's very close, so you just pick them up in the medevac, ship them across the channel. Um, Protoss players haven't had to deal with Hellion harassment, so they don't tend to deal with it very well. I'll just pull all their probes in a line, and then you roast them all, and you take your advantage and just kind of extend on it, uh, is how you want the build to play out. 
if you get into head-to-head -head fights, Marines actually grow sentries and zealots pretty well. It's stalkers that you kind of have to worry about. Um, I don't tend to build the reactor with this build. You can actually get three Hellions by the time your medevac gets out, and just do a three Hellion drop. But just kind of personal preferences here from Cam Panda. He's adding on more and more barracks, so he's going to follow up uh, with probably an all-in of some sort. He's got four barracks up, building another factory as well. Uh, so it'll be a very strong bio follow-up to this. He may wait for a medevac or two, just uh, in case. But we do see the Hellions into the natural. He tries to roast those probes, but he will not quite be successful. We see he's killed four so far. Uh, reinforcing stalkers try to come in, and that really didn't do too much damage. A little bit of risk there by Raven Assassin, blowing all his probes in the line, but his force fields were good at the top of his ramp to prevent the Hellions from getting to his probes. Um, man, it's purple and pink to tell part on the minimap. Um, again, if you didn't know, I'm actually uh, red-green colorblind. I'm sure there are many other uh, males out there who have the same color. Um, I used a stronger color mod. If you watch some of the early casts from CTL, I had that. But then lovely patch 1.5 took that away from me. Helen's going to come in the front, and we do see kind of a small army here. There's only one stalker, so a lot of these probes could go down, and that's a... Uh, He's really sacrificing these Hellions, but he's doing a lot of damage here. Uh, we'll have to see exactly how much damage the Hellions have taken down. He got nine more workers with that. Thirteen workers killed for four Hellions is a pretty good trade. Um, the real issue now is that these uh, production buildings are kind of stranded on the other side of the map. If you're doing just the naked ones, you can float your starport and your factory back to your base. However, now they're kind of stuck. He's going to follow up with tanks, it looks like. So this is going to be um, not a 1-1-1 all-in. It's going to be kind of a 4-2-1 all-in, I guess, with two command centers. But this is basically all-in. He did quite a bit of damage, and we see Raven Assassin now taking his third Nexus, uh, perhaps knowing that he's a little bit ahead economically. And we actually see 34 probes to 25 SMBs. And that's a pretty big advantage at this point of the game. So Cam Panda did a little bit of damage with that Hellion attack, but his opponent still had economically. Despite his natural command center finishing up, he really... Oh, that's a really good spot on that observer. He might have spotted it while he was moving around and just had to wait for enough energy. But, well done, picking off his opponent's observer. And if we actually look, army supply right now, 35 to 27, and I feel like he might have missed his opportunity by a little bit. If he follows up a little bit sooner after doing that economic damage, he's got a good chance. Especially since his opponent took this third base. He's got a little bit of a gap in that production. But now just kind of sitting back, macroing up, we see he's really supply blocked at a lot of crucial stages here. And all of a sudden, Raven Assassin definitely has a stake in this game. Um, granted, the 9 pro kills are nice. Or the 13, excuse me. The 13 pro kills are nice, but if you don't have anything to follow it up with, you're going to have a little bit of trouble. And this timing that he's moving out at isn't going to be the best for him. He's got Stimpak finish, uh, but this is a purely bio force. He's got one medevac with it. Um, and it's going to be difficult. If he had these siege tanks, just one or two of them, all of a sudden this push has so much more power. Uh, but instead with just the bio, I feel like it's a little bit weak. And we see Raven Assassin knows that it's happening, warping in more zealots. Uh, he may be able to get out this immortal in time. It's going to be pretty close. We see Panda a little bit risky with his forces here. He needs to poke up into the third and just take that out. Yeah, there he goes. The real issue he runs into now is this Protoss army could have just moved in and trapped him in this choke point, and that's exactly what he's going to do. So now Cam Panda has this little army kind of trapped up here. Um, never mind. Actually, Raven Assassin going to back off. Um, I'm not too sure why. He had this little army trapped in, and I'd be much more scared of this force uh, than I am of this force. So, I feel like Raven Assassin missed a little bit of an opportunity. He's getting supply blocked as well, just because that pylon in the next got taken down. He immediately rebuilt it. Uh, really wants to get up that production. You see, he's got two forges. He's got his Twilight Council researching charge, and everything looking like falling into line right now for Raven Assassin. Cam Panda has no upgrades on his bio, has no upgrades on his tank, has only one medevac. Uh, and a lot of that tech that he's invested in just isn't there to help him out with this push. Um, he's finally starting to saturate his natural 
we see 47 probes to 28 CVs. So while this was a cute opening for him, and definitely did a lot of good, uh, the harm and not macroing behind the follow-up, just kind of catching up to him a little bit. And Raven Assassin, the longer he extends this game, the better. The scarier his army is going to get compared to his opponent. We see a couple of Archons uh, warping in. He doesn't have Storm, he's maybe researching it yet. Uh, and that may be something to consider. Right now, the Protoss army has no uh, AoE with it. Uh, he's relying a lot on straight-up power, uh, which he has a lot of. Two Immortals, two Archons is quite good. The sentries can help parse the army into sections. And there's only one meta back, which is important to know. These two siege tanks, though, enable a lot of space control for campaign, and this is going to be an interesting engagement. I would love to see Raven Assassin wait a little bit, but he does catch these tanks on siege. Uh, Force Field's not doing a whole lot of good there, uh, but they do go down. The Guardian Shield's doing immensely more to protect against uh, the range damage. Siege tanks have all fallen, and the Archons just doing so much damage with that Guardian Shield protecting them. Uh, the Archons really untouched throughout that battle. A lot of the less the less beefy units went down very quickly. The Zealots and the Sentries all died, uh, but the Immortals and the Archons live through that engagement. They deal a lot of damage if they're not accounted for. And yeah, now we're stuck 92 supply to 64. Raven Assassin suddenly with a pretty big lead. Two more uh, barracks being added on by Cam Panda, but he doesn't have the economy really. 35 SCVs to 55 probes. His tech building's kind of separated from everything. He's starting to produce medevacs from his proxied starport. And this will eventually be scouted out by Raven Assassin. Um, especially since he still hasn't seen a starport in the main. The number of times he's gotten his observer in there, he should start worrying about where his opponent's starport is. And if he just comes over here and takes these out, that's a lot of money invested in buildings that really aren't doing anything and can't be defended. So Raven Assassin now sees his opponent's army. See... Another siege tank can perhaps be a little bit leery of going for the attack right now. But if we look army supply-wise, 56 army supply to 36. And Raven Assassin with just an incredible lead, starting his 2-2 upgrades. Or is this 3-2? This is actually 3-2. Um, so really well done by him. Still stuck on 1-0 right now for Camp Panda. He's only got one engineering bay, I believe, no armory either. Um, yeah, this is going to be tough. Even using a scan rather than... That's a pretty expensive investment to scan and check for your opponent's observer and just have it not be there. Um, it's a lot of little things. Starting to pile up for Camp Panda and Raven Assassin going to sit back. Just playing this game out very patiently. You can't fault him for that. When you're ahead, you get more ahead. You want to make sure that you have the game secured rather than throwing it away a little bit hastily. You see, Camp Panda looks still a little bit nervous. He's got a couple extra workers on his gas geysers uh, in a couple of cases. He's starting to mine out in his main, and we see he's transferred workers down to his third that have already been taken down. Um, now starting to even up the worker kills, 14 to 2. In come a couple of these bio units, they will take out that zealot. And now we'll probably see Raven Assassin just kind of wait for his max out and then head across the map. I love the addition of his cannons, make sure no drop can catch him, and really just a very safe game being played by Raven Assassin. And one that you definitely would love to see if you're a Galaxy team member. Warp Prism going to come in the back, maybe try a little bit of harassment. We don't see, there's no missile turrets, I don't believe, well, there's no Vikings. And now the proxy buildings have actually been found out, a group of wandering zealots. We'll be able to take off the add-ons and uh, force these buildings to start flying away back home. Third base has finally been restarted by Camp Panda, so he'll have that eventually. And right now, Raven Assassin just in a gigantic lead, 170 supply to 123. Uh, there are these two siege tanks from Camp Panda. If he can get up a couple more of those, the space control and the damage output from uh, siege tanks can actually overcome quite a bit, even in this matchup, uh, where they're not as common. Uh, the reason they're not as common is because uh, Protoss units just don't clump up the way Terran and Zerg units do. They tend to be a little bit bigger units, which is part of it, and then once Zealots get charged, they fan out as they charge, and it's hard to do splash damage to more than one of them. But if you focus on your targeting, if you're able to target down your opponent's stalkers, uh, they still can do a lot for you. Um, Raven Assassin, though, going with a very smart mix uh, for what his opponent has. When you see Siege Tanks, you do want to go heavier Zealots, you want a couple of Immortals. Archons are fine because they tank damage like none other, 
and they don't get dealt the extra damage because they're not armored. Colossus out as well. Colossus actually have the same range as siege tanks, I believe, uh, with their range upgrade, at least without vision. Um, now I sound a little bit unknowledgeable. Anyway, only one medevac out for Campana. That's another problem. We see he's still healing up units after stimming them earlier. And now Raven Assassin getting into aggressive posture. I'd love to see some Templar added in with some Sorum. Still only really has the AoE damage from this one Archon. Uh, Colossus is pretty good, but they're not great against Terran. Um, they're great at soaking up damage, and they do pretty significant chunks, but they, they don't have the AoE damage that a Templar does. In comes the Zealot. Just trying to see kind of where his opponent's positioning is. And he sees that the third base is pretty wide open, so he's actually coming in with a kill squad of probes. Starting to throw a couple of those away. He is at 73, so I guess that's not the worst move possible. Even sending in a couple of these zealots, starting to trade away for useful supply. And the zealots and the probes engaging on the third base, not really killing a lot of these workers, just kind of damaging, taking time. And Camp Panda doesn't want to engage into this, and now finally a lot of these workers are going to go down. The third base will fall eventually. Uh, the factory in the starport that just floated over here also going to go down. And Camp Panda in a tough spot now, trailing by about 50 supply. There was a warp prism over here earlier. I guess I missed out on this shenanigans. Oh, never mind. Those are actually all up the third base. I'm fine. So I didn't see what happened to the warp prism. I apologize. Not quite keeping my eye on the minimap. We do see more bases on the way from Raven Assassin, adding on a fourth, a fifth, a sixth base. Uh, not taking the middle, kind of oddly enough. Uh, this starboard's actually going to go down. Rather than lifting it, just going to kind of sacrifice it. And we do see the siege tanks getting into good position up on the high ground. Uh, these can kind of be circumvented uh, with Blink if you wanted to, but the only problem right now for Raven Assassin is there's no way to really engage this army head on. Uh, with all these siege tanks. He kind of has to wait for the opponent just to starve out and start moving across the map. And we see that's about to happen. There's one mineral patch left in the main with 20 in it, and these are all starting to get finished out. There's just no extra resources. Dark Templar coming in, but uh, unfortunately there's the missile turret able to spot that. Just kind of to check back in the production. A starboard, a couple more gateways. Uh, so we're up to 12 in the main. There's a fleet beacon. Uh, everything kind of going on. We're starting to research shields level 2. A couple of these zealots taking some tank fire that they didn't really need to. But just kind of remaxing on better units, I would say. He's still got 20 supply for you to do whatever he wants with. Uh, void rays, mothership, not bad choices at this point. Uh, as they would definitely help get into the meat of this Terran army. But Raven Assassin really content to contain his opponent. He knows that he's got these bases pylon blocked. So there's no way his opponent can actually sneak out anything on him. Zalek going to come up just to make sure everything's still there. And we do see Dark Templar in the main. Uh, and it is finally cleaned up. He doesn't snipe anything too important. Um, looks like he got a couple of workers. Uh, all of the mining gas, of course. But workers not the biggest deal. Eight workers is more than enough for the one base that he has. He is still dropping mules here. Uh, he needs to float this main orbital somewhere else, but right now, just a really tough spot to be the Terran player right now. And it comes Raven Assassin. I'm not sure he really wants to engage this, but he's going to anyway. Uh, tanks on the high ground doing quite a bit of damage. There's this stim up from the bio units. They were already pre-split against these Archons. And the Archons, the Zelts are all gone. Archons falling as well, but they can't get to the meat of this Protoss army, which is the Colossus right now. There's still four of them left. <coughs> SCVs being pulled, the Colossus now going up on the high ground to try and take care of these siege tanks. A lot of Protoss units falling right now, but the position that he's gained himself is almost unlosable now. 126 supply to 24, and units starting to move into the main base, starting to take out the natural, shooting down the rest of the army now. Uh, looks like a manor mule dropped down by Camp Panda. Uh, the one siege tank left alive, trying to take down a couple of stalkers with it, but that is going to go down. There's 18 supply of life somewhere, although I'm not entirely sure where. A couple more Marines and Marauders do pop out of that. And there's the GG from Camp Panda. And Raven Assassin has taken game number 3 for Team Galaxy and given his team the first lead of the game. So a really well-played game. I'd just like to say he played so safe. 
getting these cannons, getting this observer on patrol back here, making sure he didn't get dropped, making sure he didn't lose the game in any conventional means, and able just to sort of push in and reinforce his army nonstop. Really well played game by Raven Assassin, and uh, Galaxy now, up two games to one, we'll head into Platinum game number one, that'll be game number four, you're watching CTL week number five, casted by Maristomatic, Galaxy up two to one on Team Kessel.